Hello everyone. I am so glad that you could join me again. Today, I want to share with you some recipes for an easy but elegant Easter or really anytime brunch. I'm serving honeydew melon wedges wrapped in prosciutto, a savory asparagus quiche with a hash brown potato crust, a decadent croissant breakfast strata adorned with blueberries and strawberries, a moist and fragrant key lime pound cake, plus coffee, orange juice, and champagne. This is a host-friendly brunch. All of the recipes can be made up to a day ahead of time. This means you can relax and be a guest at your own brunch party. We are going to start with the key lime pound cake because it needs time to bake. Now, my oven is preheating to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius, and I have greased my 10 inch bunt pan. I'm going to set this aside. To make the batter, tip one cup or 227 grams of softened butter and a half cup or 82 grams of vegetable shortening in the bowl of a stand mixer. The vegetable shortening will give the cake a distinct luxurious crumb. Beat the butter and shortening at medium speed until the mixture turns creamy, about one minute. Gradually beat in three cups or 600 grams of sugar until the mixture turns quite fluffy, about five minutes. One at a time, beat in six large eggs that are at room temperature. This batter looks just gorgeous, so now I need to add the dry ingredients. I have weighed out 390 grams or three cups of all-purpose flour here, a half teaspoon of baking powder, and a pinch of salt about one-eighth of a teaspoon. And I'm going to whisk these dry ingredients together. I'm going to add the flour mixture to the butter mixture, alternating with one cup or 240 mils of whole milk. And we're going to begin and end with the flour. We want to do this at low speed. Once the flour mixture has disappeared into the batter, beat in one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, one teaspoon of lime zest, and a quarter cup or 60 mils of freshly squeezed lime juice. This smells wonderful. Now we can pour this gorgeous, gorgeous batter into the pan. This batter, as you can imagine, is highly perfumed. Smooth out the top a little. Based on the looks of this batter, I think this might turn out to be one of my better pound cakes. We need to bake this until a wooden skewer inserted into the cake comes out clean. That's going to take one hour and 15 minutes or so. I will link the recipe for this cake in the description below. I'm going to clean up the decks and then we can move on to the next recipe. While the cake is baking, we might as well move on to the next recipe. We are going to make an asparagus quiche with a hash brown crust. So this is a gluten-free quiche. And little prep work. I need two scallions. 
I'm going to cut, transfer these to a bowl. Then I need eight ounces of fresh asparagus spears. It's Easter time. We have to have asparagus. And I need to cut these into two inch pieces. But first, I want to determine where the most tender part of the asparagus is. So you simply snap off the stem and that will tell you roughly where you should cut. I'm going to reserve these ends for something else. Put the asparagus in a bowl. I like to have everything prepped when I cook. I already have my cheese grated and my hash brown potatoes. I'll tell you the measurements when we use these potatoes. Then I need four strips of thick cut bacon that I will cut into half inch pieces. I popped this bacon into the freezer for a few minutes just to make it easy to cut. Now we can head over to the cooktop. In a 10 inch diameter cast iron skillet that is set over medium heat, cook the bacon until it renders its fat and just begins to turn crisp. That will take about six minutes. Transfer the bacon to paper towels to drain. Add the asparagus to the skillet and let it cook in the bacon fat until it begins to brown a little. That will take about four minutes. Transfer the asparagus to a bowl. Add four cups or 352 grams of shredded hash brown potatoes and the bacon and grinds of black pepper to the skillet. I'm using store-bought hash browns here. Spread the mixture along the bottom and one inch up the sides of the skillet to form a crust. Cut off the heat and transfer the skillet to a 375 degree Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius oven. Bake the crust until it turns golden, about 20 minutes. While the crust is baking, let's make the custard filling. So I need six large eggs. We are using a lot of eggs today. A viewer told me that she uses these eggshells in which to plant seeds for her garden. That sounds like a cool idea. Whisk. We need one cup or 240 mils of half and half. Half and half is just 50% whole milk and 50% cream. Four ounces or a big handful of shredded Gruyere or Swiss cheese. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, plop, one teaspoon of salt, grinds of black pepper. So this is a highly seasoned custard. And then stir in the scallions that we cut up earlier. I bought these nifty wooden spatulas on Amazon. They are called spurtles. I can link them in the description below if you are interested. And that's it. Our custard is made. Our cake will be done before the crust is, so I'm going to set this aside for a moment. This smells just wonderful. I need to let this cool in the pan 
for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we will unmold it. Our crust is lightly golden. It's crisp, too. So now I'm going to scatter the asparagus over the crust. Pour on the custard. Now we can return this quiche to the oven and bake it until the custard puffs and the custard is done. That will take 20 to 25 minutes. So now we can unmold the cake. I'm going to ask you to say a prayer for me. Voila! We have a beautiful key lime pound cake. I'm going to make a quick glaze for this. And for the glaze, I need one cup or roughly 120 grams of confectioner sugar, two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lime juice, a little splash or about a half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and whisk. Just for fun, I decided to add a small amount of green luster dust to the glaze. Luster dust is edible glitter. I can link it in the description below if you are interested. Need to place the cake on a sheet of parchment. And you do want to glaze the cake while it is still warm. let this cake cool completely. I have one more recipe to share with you. It's a croissant breakfast strata. And before we can make it, I need to buy some croissant. And the very best croissant is at my local farm store. So please take a drive with me. I also need to pick up some flowers. Change of plans, my friends. The farm store did not have the croissant I wanted, so we are heading directly to the flower shop. I will use pastries from the supermarket for our croissant strata. I heard you want to leave this place where we grew up. This old town just put it all behind. Here are the flowers we bought. I love these colors. I'm going to put the flowers in water and then we can arrange them after I make the next recipe. On to our croissant breakfast strata. This is a great make-ahead dish of croissants that are torn up and then they soak in a custard overnight. It's a great make-ahead dish. So I have my 9 by 13 baking dish here and I have greased it. Set this aside. Then I need six large eggs.
I said six large eggs. I meant four, just four large eggs. Whisk. Then we need to whisk in one and a quarter cups or 295 mils of milk. I'm using whole milk. This is very similar to our quiche mixture. A tablespoon or so of pure vanilla extract. I had really hoped that my local farm store would have their fabulous croissants. I needed five, they only had two. So I went to the local supermarket and, and I got a bunch of slightly inferior croissants, but they will work perfectly well for this dish. And I need to tear these up and put them right in the baking dish. Pour on the custard. Make sure that the croissant is covered with the custard mixture. This next step is entirely up to you. I'm going to sprinkle some brown sugar over the strata. Now all we have to do is cover this with cling film, pop it into the refrigerator overnight, and then tomorrow we will bake it off shortly before guests arrive. Meantime, let me clean this up and then we can arrange the flowers. Now that our food has been made, let's go ahead and do a flower arrangement. For greenery, I am using stems of boxwood and pacassandra that I clipped from my garden. It's amazing what we can do with just inexpensive florist flowers and some free greenery from the garden. I'm going to set this aside, clean up my workstation, and then we can set the table.
the table is set. Now all I have to do is prepare some honeydew melon that I'm going to drape or wrap with prosciutto. I will only need half of this melon. Now, I very often do cantaloupe with prosciutto for brunches. There are only four of us for brunch, so I only need four wedges. I'm going to remove the rind here. Here's my prosciutto. Smoky, salty prosciutto and sweet, juicy honeydew melon go very well together. And there we have it. Honeydew melon wrapped with prosciutto. I'm going to cover this with cling film and then pop it into the refrigerator overnight. And then tomorrow, all we need to do is brew some coffee, arrange some orange juice, put some champagne on ice, and reheat the various dishes that we made earlier today. So I will see you first thing tomorrow morning. Good morning. It is brunch day. My guests are due here in about one hour. So all I have to do is bake off the croissant strata. So my oven is preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. The strata will require from 20 to 25 minutes in the oven. And I'm going to warm up the asparagus quiche with the beautiful hash brown crust in a 350 degree Fahrenheit or 180 degree oven. Have champagne here, but Prosecco would work equally well for a brunch. I almost forgot to garnish this baked strata with strawberries and blueberries. My guests are here, so now we can open the champagne. I don't have the nerve to ask any of my guests to be on camera. Everyone loved this make-ahead brunch. The prosciutto-wrapped honeydew melon was the perfect start to the meal. The hash brown potato crust that encased the asparagus quiche was crisp and delicious. Everyone commented on it. The croissant breakfast strata was sweet and comforting, and the key lime pound cake was moist and exquisitely perfumed. Well, that was a fun brunch, and all of it made ahead of time. All I have to do now is put away the dishes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I can put a couple of my other videos at the end of this one that you can watch between now and my next upload. Until then, please treat yourself well, try one or all of these brunch recipes, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye, friends.